Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Inflamed Sisters Thriving Podcast, a safe space created to guide women living with chronic illnesses to uncover their purpose by doing what they were meant to do, move in power by advocating for themselves and accelerate their growth in health, career, and business. You will learn how to stop hiding and start thriving. We will inspire, educate, and motivate you as we show you Inflamed Sisters Thrive Together Always. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. And as you know, I am Katina Morrison, your host, a registered nurse, as well as chronic illness warrior and coach. And it is my privilege to introduce my amazing guest, Emily Harari. Hello, Emily. Would you please Hi, introduce Tina. yourself? Yeah. Hi. So I'm working with a team called Immu, And what we're excited to talk about with you guys is uh, decentralized science, a way that anyone with an autoimmune condition could get involved in research. Um, so I do business development for Immu, and also outreach, engagement, communications. Um, we're a small team that spun out of a university just last year. So uh, I do a lot of things. <laughs> and if you're DMing us on social media, I'm the one responding. So really front facing for us. Wow, that's amazing to really be able to see one of the faces behind such an amazing company and organization like MU. Um, and then to know that that face is who you're interacting with, because, you know, most days in, in these times, people in companies and businesses, et cetera, are hiring social media managers. So as someone who um, runs my own social media um, platform as well um, and gets some assistance at time, hey, you are doing an amazing job um, and carrying quite a load. Um, so what I would love to learn about it from you, MU, could you explain what that stands for, by the way? Sure. Uh, it's kind of a funky way of spelling immunity, uh, because what we look at is the immune system. And uh, it really is focused on you, uh, individualized precision medicine. So what we like to do is we like to uh, take a molecular snapshot of your immune system uh, from home. Basically, we send you a kit. You would put it on your arm and send us the sample. And we do a type of sequencing, a type of uh, transcriptomics. It's like genetic technologies maybe your audience is familiar with. Uh, we're just really interested in what genes are turning on and off in the cells of your immune system. And we think that this is a way to get better testing. Um, you know, there have been plenty of times we've heard from our autoimmune community that they'll go to the doctor and their RA factor uh, doesn't show that they're doing worse or their calprotectin uh, says they're fine, but they don't feel fine or vice versa. We just wanna come up with, uh, you know, better tools for autoimmune diseases. And I'm really excited to share the RA study with you, because that one is trying to target a really specific question as well for the community. You know, it is actually for me a privilege to really be able to dig into these things, because the work that you're doing is really impacting in an um, amazing way, in a beautiful way, the lives of people who live with autoimmune diseases like me. As many of my audience know, I have rheumatoid arthritis as well as um, a condition called fibromyalgia that hasn't yet been consi considered a autoimmune disease, but is very closely related with autoimmune diseases. And maybe through the type of research you're doing, it would be able to quantify or to, to really show through research what really goes on and on that connection between autoimmune diseases and conditions like fibromyalgia. Um, but I really love this work and how you are really connecting with the community in a special way. Uh, it's actually profound to me. Like I like hearing what you said, but this is the other thing. As a registered nurse, my background and my degree is actually in science. And so while I self-advocacy and mindset and all these other things are so important, uh, also the science of things is a big part of my knowledge base as well. So my audience is getting introduced to that side of it even more so now. So I thank you for, for coming to share that knowledge. So we you talked about 
where the name MU came from, which listen, you all picked an amazing name um, for it. You did a great job on that. Um, and then you talked about the work that the company does as far as how you do it and what's the foundation and basis for it. Now, you also um, dropped about a particular trial or a particular research um, that's currently in um, process. Let's talk a bit about that because I want to see, especially as a person with rheumatoid arthritis, you know, what are the goals of this particular um, research um, that you're doing at this time? And um, what is the impact that you anticipate that it could potentially have for that community? And how can we get behind that? Just, you know, just let us know. Definitely. And the questions that you're asking are, I think the questions that folks with autoimmune conditions have been asking for a long time, like what research is happening? How can I get involved? How can I make a difference for myself and just for the community in the future? But uh, up until this point, we haven't found researchers directly addressing your questions like that and speaking to you. So, you know, we have this amazing tool. We wanted to bring actionable insights to people with uh, autoimmune conditions. So the very first thing we did was rheumatoid arthritis looks interesting. Let's start there. And we hosted a brainstorming workshop. We brought together um, RA folks and asked them, what are your research ideas? Because really the lived experience is what is so, so valuable. And there a lot of researchers don't have. Um, so Tina, you're lucky. I mean, your uh, patients are lucky because, you know, their caretaker, their provider, you know, you have personal experience with RA as well as your technical training. And, um, and our, no one on our team right now has RA. So we had to get that perspective. We held that workshop. Um, it was in July. And uh, you can see we've posted the insights from it. Uh, we've had some really exciting people, active people in the community joining it. You know, Angela Lundberg, uh, Chronic Eileen, um, uh, Chronically Vicky, you know, these are all the, their, their handles and they blasted it to their communities. So it was really was a group effort. And we tried to reach some consensus about the best research idea that would yield the most actionable insights because sometimes what we miss with research is how can the answers from this study help us today um, and actually be useful immediately so what we found out was uh you know we came up with ideas we reached some consensus and then we even posted on reddit and twitter and you could still go back to those posts um, and vote there uh, and we found the top priority was answering this question of which medication works for me? And when we talk about incentives in research, and it seems like an obvious question, but it hasn't really been investigated so much because let's think about who's doing scientific research. We have big pharmaceutical companies and they're great at developing targeted therapeutics, but they're great at focusing on their own therapeutics, not necessarily telling you to take another company's drug if that's better for your body, right? It, the incentives are not necessarily aligned there. And then we look at academia, like universities and, and professors there, which is the world we came from and we spun out of. And, and the reason why we left the university lab was because it moved just so slowly. And we wanted to bring this technology to more people uh, rather than keep it locked behind those university doors. So these are all the reasons why we wanted to answer that question with the RA community. It came from, it came from people with RA asking which medication works for me. And we think that if we can crowdsource this study, we can get an answer to that question in much faster time than, uh, you know, the traditional routes of research like pharma and academia. What a, like, this is all exciting to me, um, to be honest with you, uh, that you actually went to the community. What happens in, in what I've seen from research and the research studies that I've read, usually, like you said, it comes from big pharma. And what is going to be the most um, 
cost productive thing for them? You know, what's going to benefit them the most in that way? And then how can they um, then provide, you know, then convince people that they need this particular thing, even if it may not be the best product medicine for them. But in your case, you went to the community and some of those names she mentioned are um, RA warriors that we all are quite familiar with within the social media um, you know, area on Instagram. So check out some of them. They have amazing pages as well. So shout out to all of them. Um, one of the names she mentioned was Chronically Eileen, I believe it was, and a few others. Go back, y'all. You heard those names. Make sure you follow them. Um, the other thing is that you mentioned on here about crowdfunding. So first you started with going to the RA community and saying, what is it that you need? They answered that question with, we need to know what medications work for me. Now, that seems like a simple question, but there are genetic implications that can play a role in whether a medication works best for one person over the other. It could also be associated with a person's ethnicity too. Um, quite a few other things that can play exposure, what they're exposed to, all those things. But uh, our genetics picks up and shows all of this in, in an amazing way in our DNA and things. Um, and as someone with rheumatoid arthritis, I've been through several different medications myself. Um, thankfully, I no longer take the 10 medications I used to be on. Uh -huh. um, and then other biologics that I try, I only at this point take Humira, one biologic, and it works very well for me, but it was a journey to get there. Um, so you're doing research that is going to help to show based on a person's genetic makeup, this is my understanding, this is the medication that likely will, will, will work best for you. This is where your doctor should start so that you don't have to take that journey of side effects and all types of things. And we all know all medications have a potential for side effects. So this may not remove the side effects, but it may increase knowledge of what is most effective. Is that the correct understanding? Yeah, I do think that is the bigger picture that we're trying mm -hmm. to address. And what a lot of what we're doing is educating the community on just how research gets done. Um, the type of technology we're using, like I mentioned, we're taking this directly from the university labs and bringing it to the people. So what that means is Today, we can't give you a diagnostic tool and we can't tell you directly, Tina, Humira is the drug for you. But what we're hoping to do is start with this crowdsourced research where the community comes together. And if we can crowdfund this study together, we will release this whole study analysis to the public and feed that ecosystem of research and hopefully provide that catalyst, right? That, that single finding that encourages the rest of the research community to take this question more seriously, which drugs work for different types of RA patients. And, uh, and, and then if we can find something really solid, then we hope to take that to the next level, make it a test that we can return individualized results for. But this is really cutting edge stuff. And for that reason, with all the regulatory implications, this is a group effort on a study that we are releasing aggregate findings for. This is what citizen science is. It's a crowdsourced study where we are together coming at the bigger picture answers. And it's a chance to be part of the future of, of RA discoveries. So just wanted to clarify that because I know that a lot of people in your audience can relate to, you know, going through all of those different drugs and sort of trial and error. And we want to speak to that frustration, but we also want to be really transparent up front the, this is the kind of answer we can provide now. And that's different from the long term where we're where we're headed. And it's just a matter in research of balancing those two goals and being realistic, but also getting that frustration and channeling it somewhere where, where we could really move forward. Mm -hmm. I like um, what I like most about this, actually love most about this, is the fact that you are putting it in the hands of the community who is impacted to be a part of it, to prove how much are they invested in not only improving their health, 
um, but potentially impacting the health and the lives of others, including even their children and family members, because this is showing um, how the genetic, you know, how, how basically your genetics impacts your health and what are the best treatment options for you. So I love that. So let's talk a bit about this uh, citizen science you know, putting the research in the hand of the, our community. What that citizen science means a bit more, breaking down that crowd um, crowdfunding or crowdsourcing for us. Mm -hmm. Right. So citizen science, it's not a new term we came up with. It's been around for a while. Uh, this idea that anyone can be part of the science and move that forward because as we've seen, science can move rather slowly, like in academia, you know, we're basically waiting for the, the grant gods to hand down um, a, a chunk of funding for some study. And um, what citizen science says is, you know, we don't have to keep it so centralized in these institutions. We have the internet, we have communities like yours of really motivated people with lived experience who can pitch in and can make a difference today. And if we just channel all of that energy into the right place, we can launch a study off the ground and get the research done so much sooner. Um, there's actually a, so citizen science is a popular hashtag already. Uh, there's one I wanna make happen, which I wanna make the hashtag Spoonies for Science happen. Mm -hmm. I think that could be, could start the movement of of the chronic illness community coming together and saying, you know what, we're just, we're done waiting. We're done waiting for uh, researchers to decide for us what we need studied. And we'd rather band together now and make the research happen that we see relevant happen um, as soon as possible. So that that's just the sort of mentality we wanna bring to it, but more concretely, what a crowdsource study looks like uh, with IMU is, we have a page up for this study that we brainstormed with the community. And if you visit that page, there are a few calls to action. That's because what we wanna convey is in any way you can help, you can make the research happen. Whichever spoons you got left, we'll take them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what that starts with is just participating in the study. If you have RA, then you can say, I'm interested in participating and we'll reach out to you about possibly enrolling in this study. Just having the condition, you can participate from home as well. That's the accessible aspect of research we're also trying to get at because so many people want to be part of research, but they're too far from the clinic or they can't afford to commute to the clinic. That's what we're also trying to address. And I can get more into the tech there uh, of how we've been able to accomplish that. But at the end of the day, what the audience needs to know is, to participate in research, it doesn't have to be this big hurdle anymore. We're trying to send out these kits and that's the very first way you can get involved. Now you may be wondering then, great, I wanna participate in this study. When's it gonna happen? When are we getting started? And that just comes down to, it's up to the community. Uh, as soon as we can crowdfund the study, then we will launch. And you can see on that page, our kernels page where we've posted our study, you can see the exact budget breakdown. You know, how much is going to lab supplies? How much is going to machinery, right? This is the radical transparency that we want to bring to biotech because this innovation only happens if we have trust with each other and you know exactly where the money's going. It's directly funding the experiments. So as soon as we can crowdfund, as easy as, you know, $5 donation, that could help us move along. And that's what we're asking the community to do is maybe instead of a cup of coffee, you could pitch into the research that you could even be a part of. Um, and, and then finally, you know, anyone could share it on social media and just grow the message and spread that Spoonies for Science uh, message across the community because it'll only happen if we come together. Those are the basically the three calls to action out there, right? You can participate, you can crowdfund, and you can share it with the community. Wow. Okay, y'all. So this has, you've outlined the three ways, and I don't see anything that would get in the way of me doing either of those three things. Um, actually, very simple. 
to give up the coffee. Um, Starbucks, it's okay to miss at least one day um, <laughs> to be able to do it because that is a Starbucks cup of coffee now. But this is the thing. So offering to be a part of it, which would be amazing. So sign me up. Um, offering $5, I'm going to going to reach in my pocket a little more than that. And then, um, and then you mentioned sharing it on social media. And that's why I'm so excited to have you on my podcast as a way to do that. Um, the thing is, these are three simple ways. And oftentimes, uh, people are leery sometimes about investing in something without knowing what, what each dollar actually goes to. So your transparency, your radical transparency, as you stated, um, is actually a good, a beautiful way to make people within the autoimmune, chronic illness, and in general, com any community feel more comfortable with supporting it. Um, because most of us don't want to go into something thinking we're going to line the pockets of, you know, make the richer richer, basically. Um, but to be able to actually make a difference in improving our um, research for our and make a difference in our own health, what an amazing opportunity. Like you are all are doing something ex so extraordinary. We would like to take this opportunity to thank our wonderful sponsors for their contributions to the success of the Inflamed Sisters Thriving Summit and Gala taking place on Saturday, October the 29th, 2022 in Tampa, Florida at the Seminole Garden Center. We thank you, Leap Cure, CSL Bearing, Powerful, Our Serendipity, View Health, Mela Vitamins, and MU. To learn more about these companies, please see the show notes and click the links for each company. Also, if you would like to become a sponsor for one of our events, contact us at nurselovesessentials.com. So you hit on a few things. Um, we've talked about MU. We've talked about um, the RA um, research um, that is going, taking place and in process now that we've got to get more people involved in. Um, and then you talked about how that technology is actually more accessible to uh, it makes it easier for people. Would you mind breaking down that technology just a bit more so that we can understand it? Um, I, I know I want to hear more about that particular technology because I don't know of anyone else using it. Of course. Um, so the technology is really what made our team possible. It's what we're doing so uniquely. Um, and the citizen science is just another layer of, of uniqueness in our approach. So the technology tries to get at this big issue, Tina, you touched on it, of making the research more accessible. Uh, we've seen certain populations are not represented in research, right? But, you know, by 2050, I think it is, U.S. is going to be majority minority, right? We're, we're going to want to represent the population better uh, more than ever before. And uh, like I mentioned, a big reason for that is folks can't get to the clinic. Um, so the technology we've used, it's a micro sampling device. We ordered it from our partner company and it helps us collect samples from home. You may be wondering where we came up with this idea. So, uh, I'll take you back to the university lab where our co-founders were doing their PhD research and they didn't have a campus hospital. Their university just didn't have that resource available to them. And for researchers, you know, running many experiments, you need samples, samples as in blood samples to run the experiment over and over again. Because really that's, that's what good science is, is tweaking it, rerunning it over and over again. They didn't have access to these samples. They didn't have a hospital nearby. Uh, so they found this company, they called them up, uh, they ordered their little device and they just stuck it on their arm. And you know, to their surprise, it was not painful at all. It uses tiny little micro needles, barely penetrates the surface of your arm, and then suction will pull out capillary blood in a small tube. And I've tried it as well. I'm normally a, a fainter. I, I often pass out when I have to give blood normally, the venous blood draws in the arm. Uh, so it was a relief for me to try this out and to realize, oh my God, not have to pass out every time or, you know, have trouble finding that vein, uh, which I know a lot of folks have trouble with. 
Um, and so this is just a more pleasant way of contributing a sample as well. Um, and so our co-founders, David and Tatiana, they got this device, they realized, shoot, we could sample ourselves and run our own experiments. And they rolled up their sleeves and that's what they did. And only after the fact, they realized, well, shoot, a lot of people have problems getting their blood drawn or getting to the clinic. And this could help run more experiments and do more research. Um, and, and that's what we thought we could bring to the community. So we partnered with this device company. We put it in a kit that we mail to people and then they'll send us back their samples and we will pull together the samples, run them through the sequencer, looking at the genes turning on and off. And uh, that's how we hope to make research more accessible and just more pleasant of an experience. I mean, doing research should be fun. It should be exciting. It shouldn't be this scary thing um, that that is you know, so painful or unpleasant, which is what we've seen thus far. So we're hoping to include more people in the research process um, and hopefully make the science more representative, right? Get more diverse and inclusive uh, research in, in, in the literature that, that we would hopefully publish one day. I the way that you just explained that made something that seemed so complicated, very simple um, and, and understandable. So I appreciate that. Um, they've got the right one. OK, I'm sharing this information <laughs> with the public uh, because that was actually the journey that you took us on learning about the founders of the company and where they started at and how they were able to um, turn this into something that was not just for personal benefit for them, but actually would benefit many to come. And yes, I am one of those people who are a hard stick. I don't have a problem with being, um, with fainting. My problem is it's usually hard for them to find a vein. I have a few mm -hmm. relatives that have a problem with fainting actually though, um, but I won't put them out on, on here, <laughs> but they know who they are. Um, but I don't, I don't have a problem with that, but I do the finding of the vein has always been a problem with me um, because uh, I have very small veins that roll. Um, and I even a while back, I created a post that talked about ways to improve your lab draws and ways that you can um, do so by being hydrated, by warm, mm -hmm. you know, wearing warm clothes or warming the arms. Um, quite a few different things that um, was mentioned in, in that. Well, I have to do all of those things. Like I need to be drinking two bottles of water before I get there. And I still might get stuck two to five times. I've mm -hmm. actually been stuck seven times um, before and had to go to both another. Both arms, right? Yes, <laughs> they, both then they arms take turns. And had to go to another facility um, where there were specialists and they stuck me another two times. So oh that's, this is the journey that, um, that some of us go through um, with the lab draw side of things and why some might even run away from in being involved in clinical trials. So you just provided the solution to that problem by providing something that they can personally do from a home, stick on their arm that gently collects the capillary blood um, that is necessary for it. And I've actually been seeing something similar to this um, actually in a commercial recently. It looked like they put a mm -hmm. patch on their arms and they were using it to for diabetics. Um, yeah. It was something similar. So I'm, you know, I'm almost wondering, is this the same company? But either way, we don't know who the supplier is. It hasn't been mentioned, but there are yeah. a few. There are a few out there and really what it comes down to, we wanted to try them ourselves. So mm -hmm. the one that we use is made by Your BioHealth and it uses the little baby microneedles. And in our preliminary study, um, where we tried to answer the question, what is a normal, healthy baseline immune system look like? We got a hundred people together. No one complained about the pain. Now we tried other devices um, and, you know, I, I they were painful. <laughs> they were different. Mm -hmm. um, and so we really tested it ourselves and we, we tried to get as much feedback as we could. I think people have also seen continuous glucose monitors, like for diabetics, mm -hmm. um, stick stuck on their arms. So those are stuck, um, the whole time. 
And I'll be honest, I haven't tried those. I do think it's sort of more similar to what we're doing in terms of uh, it's, it's limited pain, like very tiny, tiny needle that you don't feel and suction sort of situation. Um, but ours, you would stick on only for like a minute or two, um, mm -hmm. and then you would just take it off. So you don't need to worry about something sticking on you for, for the whole day. Good. Well, that's even better. I, um, I really love how you have walked us through this journey, um, not only through knowing what your company is about, but knowing even uh, and what types of thing work that you're currently doing, but also knowing how a person can get um, involved and how um, simple and easy it is to do it. So everyone, I am personally going to be trying this. Um, Emily was not aware of this. I'm not trying it on this episode, um, but I am. That would be fun. We could do a live with that. <laughs> that would have been fun, fun if I had actually got one shipped to me in advance. Um, yeah. But I am going to try it. And I actually, guess what? I'm going to try it on a live on Instagram. How about that? So y'all be prepared to watch as Katina herself gets involved in citizen science and um, participates in this trial. Why not? I have rheumatoid arthritis and I want to make a difference. Okay. I want to be a part of a clinical, of clinical research and maybe a clinical trial one day. Um, whatever the case is, I want to um, be someone that supports your company. I, I love the work that you're doing. I also appreciate that uh, you're providing a way for us to get involved and it really doesn't cost us anything but to participate and maybe a coffee. That's pretty darn excellent. Yeah. We're just, if someone can afford to, then, then that's what we'd ask for. If their relatives, you know, are looking for a way to support them, uh, then we would su suggest share with them the study that they could help uh, contribute to. But I, I can't emphasize enough. I know a lot of folks in the chronic illness community are financially strained. The financial burden of dealing with these conditions is very real. And that's why I just want to communicate up front, just participating, just giving, you know, just being someone with RA and uh, joining the study from home uh, is enough or just sharing is enough. I think we need to, we stress so often this, in this sort of like self-love and, and positive self-talk that just you are enough and, and for the researchers, just getting the community just interested is enough. Um, mm -hmm. So I could not stress that. Uh, could not stress that enough. Uh, but I'm. I'd be excited to do a live demo. That'd be really fun, and we could do a, the yes. experiment and, and have folks watching and, and commenting. Let's do that. That's let's All put right. that on the books. In fact, how quick can you get me that um that kit? <laughs> I think I, as I, fast as regular shipping works. You know, we'll just All send right, let's it get in that the mail. Kit on on um on its way because it, it might right. be coming very very soon y'all um so look out if this um plays after before you know after that check out my page we will be doing this live now the thing is this uh you stated some positive affirmations and that's important an important thing to our community too is knowing you are enough you will make a difference you can make a difference you are the difference that is needed now. Um, so that being the case, just find a way to support, even if it is sharing um, the information about this amazing company, MU, that is I-M, capital Y-O-O. -O. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. I did. <laughs> and did you see a moment of brain fog hit me? <laughs> um, I don't know if you noticed it. Those who watch the YouTube video are going to see my eyes. Uh, I, I have this thing that normally when it hits me, mm, the eye goes to the, was, did I do that right? Did I say that? What was I just saying? Um, so <laughs> maybe your studies will help with that too. Um, we'll, we'll give us some clarity on what are the ways that we can, can, can manage this brain fog uh, more mm -hmm. effectively. So I am um, sorry, y'all. Sometimes Katina gets a little off topic, um, but I go with where the brain goes sometimes. Uh, that being said, so Emily from MU, we've 
we've had a journey in this conversation and this discussion that I have just really been enjoying. And the thing is, there's going to be a part two to this because you have a future study that is coming up. Are you ready to kind of drop some hints about that so that we can get the people ready for our next um, collaboration together? Oh, for sure. So we mentioned at the beginning, you know, Tina, you have fibro, you also have RA, and we see that a lot in the autoimmune community, multiple conditions. And what kind of bothers us personally, our team is people with these comorbidities are excluded from research because they're too complicated, they're too messy. And that's just reality, you know, is that so many people are not part of the research because they're not the perfect study participant. And what we want to get at is autoimmunity we're sure there are dots to be connected, right? Across fibro, across RA, across Hashimoto's, across Renaud's, um, you, you name it, just start rattling off the list. So for that reason, that's why we're researching the autoimmune system. This first study is for rheumatoid arthritis, but this next study coming out this month is for inflammatory bowel disease. So that is where we're bringing together the IBD community and in the broader autoimmune community to get that research funded and, uh, and sourced with the people who want to participate. So check it out. Um, stay tuned on our social media. We'll be releasing the IBD study um, on our kernels page this month as well. So that's very, really exciting. We hope to just grow this movement of citizen science and bring all the spoonies together and say, just pitch in whatever spoon you got, we'll take it. And I'm excited to, to assist in that process. One of the beautiful things about what I've been able to do um, through my social media platform is to create a community that connects so many people with various autoimmune diseases and chronic illnesses. So if you are currently one of my followers, make sure that you follow this company, but also be ready to um, support and participate. We've been waiting for a company that actually listens to us um, and also waiting for ones that allow us the opportunity to be involved and be a source, be a support to actually create, provide the direction on which the res on in, in direction on which the research will go. That being said, um, we found that company, y'all. Okay. Uh, so that being said, let's go ahead and support them. And I appreciate that. So we've got IBD coming up. We've got RA in process. And so all my other warriors calling all my warriors, uh, reach out to MU and tell them what you want to see next. What is after RA, IBD, what, um, which is irritable bowel disease for those that don't know. Right. Inflammatory, um, but yeah. Well, not your, why did I say irritable? I have irritable I think bowel there's, syndrome. Exactly. It's inflammatory bowel disease, y'all. See, I told you brain flat fog will hit you at any time. So inflammatory bowel disease is the mm -hmm. condition. We have RA, which is of course rheumatoid arthritis. So what is next? We're excited to hear what will be the next um, condition. And under that inflammatory bowel disease, I found also, cause I was like, let me make sure as a nurse, I'm up to date on these things. Um, mm -hmm. They, you know, many different conditions fall under it, like Crohn's disease, mm -hmm. for example, um, as one of the conditions that's considered Considered an inflammatory bowel disease. Um, there's quite a few conditions. So if you have something that um, is a bowel disease that had that is based in or has is associated with inflammation, um, you know, and autoimmune disease, make sure that you're reaching out. And of course, all my rheumatoid arthritis warriors, if you have it, or if you are a caregiver to someone who has the condition mm -hmm. or a part of their sort um, support system please reach out to them. You can also feel free to reach out to me and I will connect you to the, the persons that can assist you with um, getting being a part of this movement. This is citizen science, you all. We have mm -hmm. a place in science. We have a place in research. Let's stand on our feet and get involved. Yeah, I wanted to share that. I think the best way to get those updates the soonest and be the first to find out would probably be by signing up with our newsletter. So if you go to our website or you'll, you're in our um, socials, 
you can navigate to it there. But our website is immu.health. And uh, that is where if you scroll to the bottom of our that very first page, there's a, a newsletter sign up and you can sign up for MU updates. <clears throat> but otherwise, we're going to be on social media. We're going to be talking directly to you guys. So uh, don't worry. The stream of communication is flowing. We are putting it out there. It's just if you want the very first updates, um, and I would highly recommend the, the newsletter as a way to, to stay tuned there. Exactly. So sign up for their newsletter um, fast because you want to know what's next so that you can be a part of it. Wow. I've enjoyed this conversation, Emily. Like I really have. Yeah, um, same here, Tina. I've learned so much actually um, about MU and I've learned a lot about how I can personally get involved. And I feel that this is, uh, it's my mission to continue to find ways that I can educate, motivate, and inspire others to thrive. And you're providing the opportunity for us to thrive together uh, as inflamed sisters and brothers and warriors. And you're connecting with the Spoonie community. You all look out for that hashtag, Citizen <laughs> Science is the first one, but the yeah. most important one that she has just introduced us to is hashtag Spoonies, Spoonies for, for Simon. Simon. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's that's the one that would be really cool because that hashtag isn't really a thing yet. So that would be a great way to see if we can start that movement on our own. Um, Tina, I wanted to touch on, you know, I like these podcasts to be more of a conversation, right? And I want to toss it back your way too you coach advocates in a way that helps them balance their health and grow their platforms and support themselves and their communities that way. Um, and I, I, this is where I feel like we really synergize and where I want to continue this conversation as we keep working together, which is how can we, you know, elevate the advocates out there? Because you see so many people, um, you know, with, with RA, they're, they hop on social media because they want to raise awareness. And, and they bring people together on their platforms. But what we want to ask ourselves is how can we take that to the next level, right? Like how can we see some tangible change from it? And I think what you do is you really give people the tools to do that. And we just want to add to that toolkit. Like, okay, you have the advocacy, you have the, the tools to manage your health, um, to be more strategic with your messaging. Those are the tools you give them. And we're just saying, add science to it, right? Like make a difference tangibly and, and throw that into your toolkit. So if, if there's an RA advocate listening or just someone with a social media, they probably have one if they're listening to this. Mm -hmm. I just want to say, you know, it doesn't take big fancy, uh, lots of followers to be an advocate. Anyone can be an advocate mm -hmm. and anyone can make a difference just by being part of the research, but by sharing it, by telling the people who follow them that this is a way to elevate the whole community work together. And Tina, I think you do a great job of that. I, you're really like, you're not just giving the fish, you're teaching people how to fish, right? And that sort of metaphor. Um, and, and that's kind of what we want to add to, like grow that that movement that you've already started too, and just help, help it all synergize and, and come together. Thank you so much. You know, actually part of what you said, and I'm um, a lot, part of what you said, a lot of what you said actually really touched my heart. I had to kind of like say, Tina, you know, <laughs> hold it together. It really touched me um, and was moving because um, when I started my platform, it was to really make a difference. It was not to um, be a person who came on, who was, I'm not a person who's money oriented. It's just not who I am. It has to be something that is fulfilling um, and it's filling me. And most importantly for me, filling others. And you are right. It is important that we provide others the tools, but also teach them how to utilize it. And you're providing an, an extra tool to it. Oftentimes, companies um, are seen as those who are taking advantage of the commu autoimmune community or chronic illness community that they want to take from them and not really give back to them. And you are actually giving back in many ways, but um, in, in the sense that you actually uh, direct your research to be based on their particular needs, what their choice is, and you tell them transparently 
where what you're doing every step of the way, including to the dollar, how you're using it. Right. That yeah. study analysis is going to be public if we can mm -hmm. crowdsource this together. It's just we're reciprocating the effort, right? Like you yeah. guys bring the spoons, we'll bring the science. That's what we're saying. Yeah. And I love, I love the references to the spoons. So those who haven't heard about the spoons, it's the spoony theory. Um, it was a, a, it was a article that was written um, where it was, the person was explaining as chronic illness warriors, we only have so much energy. So she compared that energy to spoons and how many spoons do you have in a day to do all the activities of life, um, even the smallest things to the greatest things. And um, you're helping us keep some of those spoons uh, by the types of work that you're doing to support the community, but um, also showing us, can you give us half a spoon at least um, yeah. to, to, to join forces with us? So I like that. Um, so we have had an amazing conversation. I, at least I think so. I think our listeners think are going to be able to. So in closing, I would like for you to talk to us more about how we can um, stay connected with you. Uh, what, what is going on now, um, where we can reach out. Uh, I know for sure we've got to join that newsletter. Um, so let us know. Definitely. Like I mentioned, there's so many ways to be part of the research that gets the RA community the answer to that question, which medication works for me. So the very first thing you can do to stay updated on everything we're up to is to subscribe to the newsletter. If you go to mu.health, I-M-Y-O-O dot health, then our newsletter is at the bottom of that front page and you can stay up to date with our with everything there. And there's a box to free answer. Give us all your suggestions, all your ideas. Um, it's, it's free flow of communication. So if you want to DM us too, DM us, I'll be on the other end of it. Um, but really what we could use most immediately is for the autoimmune community to come together to prove out this concept. This has never been done before, you guys, that research can be crowdsourced and that the community can decide how soon this research happens. We think it needs to happen right now. That's why we're crowdsourcing it. We're not waiting for the grants or for whichever um, bigger pharma company to decide it's it's a priority for them. It's a priority for you guys. So that's why we put it up on kernels. So go to that kernels page. And if you can spare just five bucks, you know, spare that morning coffee today, then what I would love is if you could hit that fund button and contribute to one of the campaigns of our current RA champions on there. Um, we, they all have great stories, and I'm going to be sharing those stories on social media soon as well. Uh, just giving to one of their campaigns can also inspire them to keep up their advocacy, right? In Mew, our team is matching donations because we want to show we're really in it. We want to help cover those costs too. Uh, this is a group effort, so if you donate now, We'll match it. And then that just, you know, doubles that donation. It just takes it to the next level. Uh, but I understand if you're financially strained, you can't even spare the five bucks. I get it. If you have RA, participate in the study. There's a video on that page and under it, you can hit participate in this study. That's where you express interest in joining. And we will reach out to you if it looks like you can be a part of it, uh, easily participating from home. Uh, Tina and I can do that live demo uh, soon. So so we'll show you, it really is painless. It's not scary. Um, and, and it's super convenient and accessible. So this is the future of, of science. Uh, this is how we're going to get the questions we want answered. The next time you come back from the doctor, you get that test result that just doesn't make sense. Or maybe you're experiencing medical gaslighting, being told this is all in your head or all anxiety, and you know it's not. Take that frustration, sit with it for a second, and just know that you can put it somewhere to make that tangible difference. That's what we wanna give people, is just a place to put that energy and make a change for, for you and just for everyone moving forward. So share it on social media, get that message out as much as you can. On kernels, if you hit share, 
pre-populate to post for you. Doesn't take any work, uh, but we'll be putting plenty of stuff out there um, on Instagram or MU Health, on Twitter, MU Health, um, on Facebook, we're there as well. We're even in Reddit as kickstart underscore research. And we engage with the community that way. And TikTok, which is a really fun place to be, to explain the science and explain how your immune system works. So go check out the Colonel's page. See if you can share that study. And if you can spare five bucks, participate, do whatever you can. You bring the spoons, we'll bring the science. Uh, that's what we say at the end of the day, because, because it's a group effort, everyone. Thanks, Tina, for having me. You're welcome. Hashtag Spoonies for Science. Don't forget that, y'all. Let's spread the word. And yes, I'm excited for that live demonstration that is going to take place sooner than many of you might think. Um, and then uh, we definitely will connect again because we've got to go in more about that research that will be um, that is in the process for the IBD community as well. So I'm excited about this. Thank you for being my guest. And it has been a pleasure interviewing you and being interviewed just a little bit. I think <laughs> this was a nice organic conversation. So everyone, you know how I end this show. I always say my sisters, we may be inflamed, but we're still here. And as long as we are here, we might as well thrive because inflamed sisters thrive together. Always have a wonderful day, everybody, and take good care of yourselves. And hold on to those spoons too.